Mother Nature and the Evergreen Tree by Vicki Sandel Stengel. Why are trees green? I once asked my father quite innocently. He laughed as he bounced me straight up onto his knee. Did I never tell you the story of how Mother Nature made this all come to be? He began, all the creatures were constantly worrying that everything seemed dead in the winter and nothing seemed living. Now Mother Nature pondered this and decided they needed some cheering and a little proof that life still resonated in the hushed clearings. She fashioned a new and handsome tree for Earth's darkest season and felt she had at last accomplished a great achievement. But then Mother Nature realized she still had something left to do, something that would require even more fortitude. A color must be chosen for the tree that would give hope amid the feelings of gloom and confusion. To be sure, she had some help, but some criticism too, which usually happened every time she tried something new. On Monday, Mother Nature began, as all experimenters and adventurers do, very daring and very grand. She created a tree that was red, such a sumptuous red, but with prickly needles and the same color as Santa's giant sled. Santa huffed and bellowed to Mrs. Claus, Mother Nature has made me a pole. It is too big of a color to splash around. What could she have been thinking? The very idea is simply unsound. On Tuesday, Mother Nature sniffed and swallowed her pride and changed the tree to blue. Blue, velvety branches swaying softly amid a sapphire hue. At first she smiled and thought, Oh yes, yes, this will do. But at the end of the day, she sighed and said, Perhaps blue was too cool. The wind had been whistling sad songs all day long, and even Mother Nature had to admit she felt a chill in her heart. It was such a lovely color, but she decided she must try another. On Wednesday, Mother Nature arose, determined to make the tree inviting and winning. She smiled and sent a glimmering stream of silver trimming. A tree of silver, how delicious to see as the silvery limbs fluttered from the fairy's game of tag and freeze. Oh, it was something to see. But Mother Nature was not sure a tree of silver was really of this world, but perhaps should be for another. On Thursday, she was getting tired, but had decided before dawn to change the tree to gold. Golden boughs were gleaming, brighter than a thousand angel wings sweetly beating. But no, this would not do. It was bold, yes, but now the sun was jealous too. Should she just change it back to blue? She moaned and confessed, What must it be like to work without all this interference coming and going in my head? On Friday, time was running out, and unable to think any further, she tried changing the tree to basic white, which was a lovely sight. White, snowy shoots covered with dangling diamonds of ice. But now everyone was pleading for Mother Nature to stop needling. Yes, the white seemed dull, but she might choose dismal gray for tomorrow or the next day for all they knew. She just smiled a funny little smirk and said, Please, children, I must do my own work. On Saturday, Mother Nature was secretly mad. Everyone knew this anyway because her gentle snowflakes had turned into thick clumps of mud cakes. She decided the tree would look best in purple. Plumes and plumes of purple blooms festooned with garlands of amethyst rooms. All the creatures and friends stood back, quiet and peeved. Was she kidding? This was a monstrosity! But Odin stopped forward, bulky and strong, saying the runes were his. He earned them fair and square, hanging upside down for days, waving in the air. She would have to give them back, or else he would cast a stare. Oh, how this man made her want to clap a giant thunderstorm under his thick, furry Norseman's cap. On Sunday, she calmed down. There must be one color that would do. What had she forgotten? What had she not thought to do? She breathed one last time, feeling a gentle reverence for all things in the heavens and earth. In a moment's time, the tree stood in a green she had never seen in all her handiwork. Green, piney, succulent needles with emerald strands and trunks of jade for strength. It was the perfect tree she had searched and searched to cover the earth. It would keep its color all through the white and gray winters. It would calm the nerves and excite the senses. 
It would bring hope and strength just as the earth seemed on the brink. The leprechauns wanted to use the color after they saw it too, but Mother Nature closed her eyes and wearily said, No, no, my little men, that won't do. I'll give you a different shade to use. Then Mother Nature decided to do much more. She swept her cloak upon the lush forest floor, conferring magic over all her baby orb. Let it be known that green can bring peace and goodwill throughout all the earth if humankind will respect its worth. Woe to those who would strip my child of green, she announced sternly but serene. Happy for a job well done, Mother Nature said to all the creatures present, Now, about the color of the sky, I was thinking perhaps something in a brown pheasant? 